All right, good morning, Calculus 2. I want to move into Section 7.3, and we're still going to work on volume, but now we're going to learn a new method called the shell method. So uh, we're still going to have a region in the XY plane. We're going to rotate it around an axis again, uh, but instead of the disk method, now we're going to do a different geometry. It's called the shell method. So let's see if we can talk about that and do an example. Um, so this is a picture of a shell. Um, it uh, kind of looks like this, a piece of PVC pipe, hollow. When we talk about the volume of this shell, we're just talking about the actual plastic. This is a plastic PVC pipe. So we're not talking about the hollow vault, uh, empty space inside. So the volume of the shell is just the plastic. So here's a picture of it, the volume of this shell. So the way we get it is we talk about the circumference of this circle. It is a circular shell. Uh, we talk about the circumference of this circle, which is 2 pi r. Remember, we're trying to get volume. <clears throat> now, 2 pi r is a linear distance. So to get an area, we have to multiply by how thick it is. And so it's dx thick. There's a shell sitting here. I call that the shell. I'm rotating the shell around, creating this volume, <laughs> uh, creating this shell of volume. <clears throat> the distance around is 2 pi r, that's the circumference of a circle where r is the radius. The thickness of it is dx. So that gives me kind of an area. Uh, 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 so, I mean, that's a linear distance. When we multiply it by that dx, it's an area. And then in order to get volume, we multiply by how high it is. So then we get, so we multiply by the height of the shell. So there you go, that's it. Um, and, that, that, and then there's a shell within a shell within a shell. So here's a smaller shell with a smaller radius and it fits within that shell. And then we try to, we add up all those shells and get the volume of a solid of revolution. I don't know if these props help, but that's the picture I'm trying to draw here. There would be another shell inside that. The radius would change. The height might change. So this radius and height might be a function of x. So here we go. Uh, if I'm rotating around a vertical axis, around a vertical axis, like the y-axis, we're going to do an example in a minute, then I've got this formula for the shell method. It's got 2 pi out in front of the integral. It's got this radius that might be a function of x, and it's got this height that could be a function of x, and then it's got the thickness of the shell, dx. So that's our three dimensions to make it a volume. Um, and we integrate from a to b. So here's the formula for the shell method. It's different geometry, different formula than the disk method can tell. Um, just for fun, while we, if we go around a horizontal axis, by the way, one of the things you may have just noticed, when I'm going around a vertical axis, I'm working in X's, which is opposite of the disk method. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that takes a little getting used to. When we go around a vertical axis, the disk method used to have this like this, and then we would work in Y's. The shell method has a shell like this, and we work in X's. Around a horizontal axis, my shell runs horizontally like this, and therefore, <laughs> I've got a different picture, and I'm working in Y's. So it's this formula, same shell method formula, but I'm working in Y's. The radius and the height, working in Y's. I wanted to use this language here. Uh, this is, this, is not the, this is now the radius to the shell. So it's from the axis of revolution, from the axis, sorry, from the axis of revolution to the shell. From the axis of revolution to the, wherever the shell is. So I'm calling this the radius to the shell. And this is the height. The height of what? It's, this is the height of the shell. So the height of the shell. 
So that's our two components, the radius to the shell, the height of the shell, two pi out front. We integrate from A to B. Let's do an example. A classic example is, is, is this shape. We've done this shape before. This is the function y equals the square root of x. I'm going to bound it here with a vertical line x equals 5 just for fun. I could have picked a nicer number, but we'll do that. If x does equal 5 and you plug it in the function, the y value over here is the square root of 5. I'm not sure. If, I don't think we'll need that. I'm going to spin this around the y-axis. So when I spin it around the y-axis, you can imagine that shape. I've done that problem before. We did it with the disk method. Uh, I think we had a different bound here, but we did it with we did that problem with the disk method. It's kind of a pain. With the disk method, you have to work in y's, and you have to subtract out the whole, that inner volume of empty space you don't want. So we you might want to call it a, a washer method from section 7-2. All right, but anyway, I'm trying to do it a new way, and this is a better way. With the shell method, uh, here's how I do it. Step one of the shell method, draw yourself an arbitrary shell parallel to the axis of revolution. So I draw this shell here parallel to the axis of revolution. That's, that's, I, I'm, I'm, that's step one of the shell method. Should I write that down for you? <clears throat> draw a representative shell I mean, there's a shell here, there's a shell here, there's a shell here. There, ju just draw one arbitrary shell parallel to the axis of revolution. And then it spins around and sort of creates this picture. And I need two things. I need the radius to that shell. Well, from the y-axis over to this arbitrary place, that's a very easy, that distance is x. So the radius to the shell is a function of x, and it's very easy. It's just x, and that's very typical. The height of the shell is the height of the shell, and guess what it is? The height of the shell changes. If it was here, it'd be a little shorter. Here, it's a little taller, but what it is, is it's that y value. It's the function square root of x. So here I am with my integral. I mean, I'm using this formula. There's a 2 pi out in front of that integral. I've got the radius to the shell, the height of the shell, with respect to x, the thickness of the shell, dx. And uh, I'm going to do that for all the shells that go from, they're going to, here's a shell, here's a shell, here's a shell, here's a, they're going to move throughout this region from 0 to 5. I'm working in x's, my bounds are in x's, from 0 to 5. I like that, man. It's way better. I don't know. It's easy. I like the shell method. I'm not saying it's always better than the disk method, but in this case, around the y-axis, I think that, I mean, that we did a disk method problem. I don't want to confuse you. I'm trying to, this is a, another geometry, and I think it's a lot better. One of the advantages is when you go around the y-axis, you get to work in x's. I think we like working in x's. Another advantage, this is important, you don't have to worry about the hole. You know, as you spin this around, you create this shape that had this, this gap of empty space. With the disk method, we said, oh, there's a hole. We got to subtract the inner volume. Well, with the shell method, you never, you don't go into the hole, so you don't have to subtract out the hole. You never go get that volume. Uh, the shell never, it, the bounds, the, the, the height, the, 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 the rate, you, you you don't, there is no volume you have to subtract. You never have to worry about subtracting out the whole. Um, so anyway, cool. Listen, just to finish the video, we'll finish this, this integral here. Uh, you know, what I would do is, uh, that's x to the 1 half, that's x to the 1st. I would combine that and call that x to the 3 halves. Then I would integrate, so it would turn into uh, x to the 5 halves. Now I got a little sloppy. Hang on. Integrate, you get x to the 5 halves, you multiply by 2 fifths. You guys with me on that? That's a power rule. Easy little power rule. Uh, hang on, and I, I got the 2 pi out front. Got a little sloppy, forgot about my 2 pi, but I didn't forget. So 2 pi multiplied by that, evaluate that from 0 to 5. So here we go down here. That's a 4 pi over 5. That's what this is. Uh, and then when I plug in the 5, that's a 5 to the 5 halves. 
minus, when I plug in a zero, it's a zero. All right, well then that's easy. Um, you know, a five to the five halves is the square root of five to the fifth power. <laughs> Let's just clean that up a little bit. Um, it's four pi over five, and then it's the square root of five to the fifth power, which is the square root of five times 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 the square root of five, which is five, uh, 25 square roots of five. So this is four pi over five, 25 times the square root of five. That's what this is. Hey, that five can cancel into that 25. Leave me a five times the four. Uh, so I've got 20 times pi times the square root of five. I like that, that's my exact answer, um, as opposed to some calculator giving me some decimal. Uh, we, we did the math and we found the exact volume of that shape. All right, thank you for listening. Please get to work on the shell method. It's awesome.